Welcome to the 48th episode of Let's Conquer Books. Rich Roll said in his book, Finding Ultra, When the mind is controlled and the spirit aligned with purpose, the body is capable of so much more than we realize. In this episode, I talk about my favorite five books that I read last year out of the 215 books I read plus two bonus that I'll include in this episode. So let's get into it. I'm your host, Alexander the Great Reader, and this is a podcast where we read, study lessons, and build our inner power, because the next level we will reach does not tolerate cowards. So in... 2018, I read 215 books. That's a correction. I know maybe in prior episodes or on posts, you've seen that I put 216, but I went through it and there was a book I added on that list that was just a want to read, not something I read. So 215 books is what I read last year. And what I'm going to go over are the five books that I enjoyed the most. And the most interesting thing about all five books is that they were audiobooks. It made me think, if I didn't really get into audiobooks, would I have I read these books? Probably not. So now I have a further conviction of the importance of audiobooks in my life and having them on my daily reading habit. So the first book is Bad Blood by John Carreyrou. And it's about Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos. It's a blood company. I was following the story from a long time. I like finance. And I actually thought very highly of Elizabeth Holmes, who was being praised as the youngest billionaire. And this technology was going to change the world of being able to check people's blood at CVSs and Walgreens for very cheap. And then when this whole thing broke out, that it was one scam. I, I couldn't believe it. And when they put a book out, I was like, oh, I'm excited to see what the whole story behind this was. But I was amazed how great the story was. It tells a story of someone who was caught up in what everybody thought of her because everybody thought so highly of her and call, calling her the next Steve Jobs. She even dressed like her. She became... I don't want to say a liar, but denied a lot of reality just to make the image of what others were thinking of her a reality. And then she became very narcissistic, controlling, tyrannical with her company, not letting whistleblowers say anything through non-disclosures. It's an amazing story. And her boyfriend that's older than her, Sonny, who was in there and he was like this mob top guy who was like the pusher and firing people and harassing people who were trying to whistleblow. It's a very interesting story. You're reading it. It's like one of those movies that you see and you're kind of like the bad guy and you kind of feel sorry for the bad guy and you know it's going to go all crashing down, but you're like hoping that some way, somehow they can salvage this. And turn their ways, but they just keep going down that downward spiral of just destroying your own life. So it's a great read. I I listened to the audiobook and it, and I listened to it in literally like two days. I was just constantly listening to it because I liked it that much. The second book is Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. This was also audiobook. It's a very big book. It's like almost seven hundred pages, and that's why I never really read it. Because I was like, oh, it's a big book. But I was like, maybe I could do this with the audio book. And oh my God, what a great book. Another one that I just couldn't stop listening to. And this one was a long listen. But it was so fascinating. His life is fascinating. How he, his childhood, his craziness of driving with no license plate. All the things he was doing at Apple and iTunes and all, you know, all his life in great detail. And you see, wow, this man was very unique and amazing, but he had a lot of his flaws. You know, he smelled. I never knew that. People said that he smelled because he didn't like taking showers. 
He was eating very weird, had weird diets. So it was a pretty interesting listening to his life story. He was he's still to me an amazing man, but it kind of humanized him to me, brought the human side of him and you know a lot of the bad stuff that happened, the challenges. He he really dealt with the trauma of being adopted. <clears throat> that kind of affected him throughout life. So I recommend this one, the second best book I read in 2015. The third book is Educated by Tara Westover. This book has been critically acclaimed. You see it at all bookstores, rated highly on all best books of 2018. I re- I listened to the audiobook actually, and this was another one I couldn't stop listening to. It was amazing. This girl lives in the mountains in, I don't know if it was Montana or Idaho, one of those countries those real rural states, and they're up in the mountains. The father is just this crazy maniac that makes him work, scrapping metal, dangerous job. She almost dies. She's She has to, like, hide the fact that she likes to learn, and she actually makes it to college and goes to great prestigious colleges. But her father's crazy. He likes things that Illuminati, very into conspiracy theories. A, A father was crazy, and she was always trying to please him the mother had her craziness too so it was like one of those stories that you can't believe this person came out of that and it creates a lot of empathy in you and also gratefulness that you know you never really had to endure something that or live a life that had a journey that way or if you have maybe it's something encouraging that you could come out triumphant the fourth book is Eli Musk by Ashley Vance. This was another audiobook. And this is in the beginning of the year. Started getting into audiobooks. And then I love Elon Musk. And I was like, this is a great opportunity. And when I, that was, I got hooked. This is one of the reasons I got hooked to audiobooks. Is I was like, wow, this book is so good. And I do have a bias. I, I love Elon Musk. I love everything he stands for. I love all the technologies he's worked on, helped found companies he's founded, his whole philosophy and mentality. So I really enjoyed it. And and another consistency is it it humanized him. You see a lot of the flaws of how he's a workaholic, how he doesn't really understand, you know, there needs to be a balance. He's just so driven to change the world and tackle these almost near impossible problems. And he was bullied and that affected him. And It affected him when Tesla almost went bankrupt. So it's a great book to see how great a person he is, but also how much of a human he is. The fifth and last book is The Third Door by Alex Banyan. Banyan. This is another audio book, and I listened to him on the Impact Theory podcast by Tom Billium, and I loved the interview, and I was like, wow, this interview was pretty good, and Tom Bellew even said, this is an amazing book. He was like praising it. And it's like, wow, you know, I really don't hear him praise books in this manner. So I started uh, listening to it. And what a ride. This kid was in college. He took a lot of risk. He actually figured out how to win the prices right, use that money to finance his dream of writing a book on how successful people become successful. And he believes there's this third door that most successful people go through, which is the one that the the successful person finds and just breaks through or creates themselves, just a door that's not even really there. And it's a great example of the journey that you need to take, the risks, the failures you're going to experience, the mistakes you're going to make, the hardships you will have to endure. But there's a lot of great that comes from those risks. He met this man that was part of some kind of organization that had a lot of connections and that helped him to get most of the connections he needed to get. He has this crazy story at the Berkshire Highway meeting where he's able to ask a lot of questions, but that became a failure. But just how he did it to ask that much questions to me was a, an example of his tenacity, his persistence of what he was trying to do. So it's a great book, especially for younger people who are wanting to pursue their dreams because it gives you a, a real 
life example of what it is to pursue your dreams. He had to overcome his own family's concerns and dislikes of him not finishing school because he was going to be like the first one and the family invested a lot for him to go to school. So it's a great book. So those are my top five for 2018 out of the 215 books I read. And I'm going to give you two notable mentions. They're not six or seven, but books that I really liked. And I wish I could put them in that list, but I had to give you five. And the first one is The 12 Rules of Life by Jordan P- Jordan Peterson. And he's been a controversial figure, but his book is really good. I enjoyed it. I actually read the physical book and the audio book, and I gained a lot from it. He dabbles on mysticism, religion, philosophy, practical advice to just make your life a better journey, uh, enjoy more, a better pleasure, even though there's going to be pain and suffering and all the things that come with life. The second notable mention is The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. This was an audiobook I listened to, and it's another like 700-page book, and wow, this thing is like an amazing college course on human nature. Each type of human nature itself you can make a career out of just studying and becoming an expert in and I love how he goes back in history and shows how that human nature still really hasn't changed and I love that he made it for you for the reader to just focus on how other people's human nature can affect you and being aware of that and how to navigate your environment and the people that are in that environment and also your own human nature and how to control it or be conscious of it so you don't allow your human nature to hurt others or hurt yourself. So there you have it. Those are the five books with the two notable mentions. And let's connect. You know, I'm always on Instagram, a little bit on Twitter, uh, on Facebook too. All the links are in the bio. And, you know, I'm looking for interviews with book readers, authors, librarians, publishers, editors, anything book related, you know. If you know someone, send them a link to the show. Let's connect on Instagram and I'll catch you on the next one. Please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Anchor, or any other podcasting platform so you don't miss the next episode where I talk about the three levels of readers' self-awareness.